Good morning. It is day three in Brazil. And the past two days, if you didn't watch our last video, were fairly hectic. A lot of driving, included the border crossing, which is always stressful. Uh, but when, if you missed that video, I want to let you know that this first part of Brazil is a lot of driving. Brazil is a huge country, what, the fifth largest country in the world, right? Yeah. Huge country. And to get to our first real destination here in Brazil, we literally have 30 to 35 hours of driving. We have covered almost half of that. So today, we're gonna be driving through the rural countryside of Brazil to see what we can find to show y'all. But first things first, we have to go into this little town of Puerto Velho and get some money. We've been struggling with the ATMs giving us money here in Brazil. So we've got to get that figured out and it's time to get some water in the van. So we're looking for potable water too. So let's go on a Brazilian driving adventure. Good news. We only had to drive about a mile before we saw this little store with water bottles sitting outside. But you gotta remember, we don't speak any Portuguese. Uh, we're starting from scratch, guys. It took us three years to go, we could talk enough Spanish to get by. And now we're over here where it's Portuguese. It's back to sign language. So I told them you were up there doing sign language. How did it go? Pretty good. She understood? <laughs> Back to the basics, huh? I don't know, yeah. Hi, <laughs> pretty Vanna. We are leaving Puerto Veljo. And we didn't get to film it for you because the banks here have intense security and guards and guns and going in and filming the ATMs at the bank would be highly frowned upon here. But we were struggling to figure out the ATM system here in Brazil. Our cards kept getting de declined or they told us we'd already pulled out our, our daily limit when we had it. It was a real mess. But. It was our fault because we did not do the quick Google search ahead of time. And once we did that this morning, we found out there are two banks that we should use here in Brazil. As soon as we found one of those banks, the credit cards worked, the ATMs worked just like they were supposed to. So that nervous part is over. We have cash and we are on the road. But additionally, we were freaking out because at the gas stations, we were trying to use our cards and we were struggling with the cards as well. It turns out we can't use debit. If they use credit, everything works fine. So we had some money nerves going on there for a little bit, but I think we cracked the code finally. Yeah, we're all smiles now. We have enough money to live for a week. <laughs> and I think we're about to turn south and head southbound. We have the day today drive through the state of Rondonio. Rondonio. And so it's a pretty large state, and we, I think we'll be in Rondonio all day today and maybe even possibly tomorrow. But if you watched our last video and we showed you the little map sequence where we had changed our entire plan instead of heading south into Bolivia and Chile and all that now, we're going around the long way. Did any of you Google and figure out where we are headed here in Brazil? What is our big bucket list item? Now we're gonna see a lot of stuff while we're here. But in that last video, I was pointed to a little area on the map that was very special and we're working our way there. And I'm wondering if any of you figured out what we're going there to see. Think they figured it out, Kurt? Eh, a couple of them, but not many. All I can tell you is we are super excited to get there but we have some fun stops along the way. We are rapidly approaching our camp spot for the night. It is an eco lodge, it's supposed to have a pool, which is good because it's really hot out here. And also some jungle trails. And it's really good because G's ready to stop. Yeah. We're ready to stop. It's been a long couple days of driving. We're hoping this place works out so we can stay an extra day and rest. We made it to camp. 
The gate is closed, but there's a place where people can fit through. So Kurt has walked up in there, hopefully to find someone. All the reviews on iOverlander say this place is great and motorhomes are always welcome. Someone was here just about three months ago, so that's pretty recent. So cross your fingers, guys. We only drove about three and a half hours today, which is still a long day in the van for everybody. But compared to the past two days of driving that we did when we crossed the border, this is an easy day and we all need it. So hopefully Kurt comes back with good news. 100 a night, which is $20 US. Electricity up here, pool, shower, bathroom. They says they have Wi-Fi, I didn't check it, but. Let's get settled we're in. We're home for the night at least, possibly Woo. two. I'm pretty sure some of these trees out here in this sparse forest are sort of from the original jungle. Primary forest legacy trees. Not sure what you'd call them. But there are some trees left over. And we showed you guys lots of pasture land where that's not the case. But because it is kind of sparse, it allows us to get in here and see stuff. Hoping tonight we can find some cool stuff. The sun's going down, it's right behind us. You can probably see it up in there. But a lot of these trees, trees have nuts and fruits and berries and seeds and all type of stuff. So there's a potential that we could see some cool birds. Now, this is definitely not just an eco lodge. This is also a farm. And right here, we have the potential to see cows. And we've already seen geese and chickens and the like. The thing is, the sun's going down. So I have a limited window. So I'm debating here, what's my best position? Should I walk down through this trail, which looks insane, and try to kick something up? Or should I just wait here in this nice open field? Okay, I think we're finally on this guy a little bit. It's one of those punk rock birds, uh, turkey birds. We've seen these in the Amazon a few times. We just saw one in Puerto Maldonado, right there at the hostel. But they're hidden up there in the thicket. They seem to keep running from me, but I think we got them here, guys. So I think if you see, they have a blue eyeball, like a blue eye shadow around their eyeball. And then they're kind of speckled with really dark brown wings and sort of a lighter colored underbelly. They're really beautiful birds. Maybe kind of like a giant pheasant. All right. So, we're gonna move on to try to get something else. We kicked up something else behind us while we were doing that. They were big. I think they were more the same birds. So, I think what we're gonna do uh, is go check out some of these random trees. But there's some more forest up here and you can see the cows and oh, we're kicking up some birds as we walk through here but if you look at these big mounds we've seen these all over the place on our drive if you guys look closely at the dash footage you'll probably see them too i don't know what they are so keep in mind I'm out here in the cow pasture and these guys are just roaming around and they're pretty big and they also use those little termite mounds or whatever they are as rubbing posts <laughs> so that's why they kind of look polished but anyway we're not here to video cows so we're going to move on to the birds hopefully so this is really cool this is a fly catcher so every once in a while He'll fly off this branch and grab a bug. See, he's looking right there for a moth or an insect. And he'll fly off and grab one and come right back here and eat it. Let's see if we can catch him. All right, guys. I put some distance between us and the cows. 
I'm over here working on this fence row. I'm losing sun fast. I'll work back to the original spot, but this is gonna be my best lighting. So this is a shot where I'd really like to have that 600 millimeter lens because then I could really see and show you the hairs, the feathers, the colors, the eye patterns. But here, I'm just a little bit too far away. It's still a beautiful shot and a beautiful bird. And it's just sitting there. Oh, there it blew away. And that, my friends, is a beautiful trogan. And its back is to us, but you can see his breast is red. He's got that typical trogan tail. See how it's cut off straight on the bottom? These are beautiful birds. I've actually watched the video of Panama. I got some amazing... I think he's looking at me. Oh, I scared him. It's okay. You guys got to see him fly. Another bird just landed in there. We're losing light though, guys. We're losing light. This is an eco lodge. And it's very apparent. They've got a lot of different lodging space. But this is kind of the configuration where they have several cab cabins. And then they sort of have a central bathroom with a few stalls in each one. And you can see that's a pod. There's a pod. And there's a couple more pods like that. You know, we see what's on the highway in the pasture land, but then we see some trees back in there. And that's probably where these ranch owners have their places tucked away. Now today, the Eco Lodge had about 47 high schoolers, junior and high, junior high schoolers, juniors in high school. And the whole class was out here on a, field day collecting leaves and tree samples or pictures or and whatnot and uh, getting a lesson about the nature and that was cool they had a big barbecue and they shared some food with us but they were out here fishing on this pond and one girl caught a nice little trout oh, I might have to get in that pool but these are more like recreational cabins or suites you can see they face the pool and right behind it i don't know there's four or five bathrooms and showers there's showers all over the place to be honest with you and then our van is right over there we have this beautiful setting that definitely gives us a better understanding of this country i mean if you can think about some of the stats the second largest beef producer in the world only behind india the largest exporter and we have been driving hours and hours and hours through that region so to kind of get up into one of these uh areas like this and to be able to see these big giant mango trees with all the green parakeets up there just sitting there munching on mangoes all day and chattering and the eyes are coupled up which i think is kind of what those kind of birds do and then oh there you can hear guacamayas oh you hear them probably see them flying right there those are green guacamayas and so we hear those flying across and see them flying across the night and howling and heckling and then they also have this cic cicadas. You can hear the loud chirping cricket sound in the background. If you listen close, sometimes they really crank it up. So here's some of the chickens and roosters. They call them something different over here. I haven't learned that word yet. I think Snow knows it, Farga or something. All right, one more walk for G before we get on the road. There's about 30 or 40 parrots right there in that palm tree eating those fruits.
with these parakeets. <laughs> they're flying into the middle of this palm tree and there's some seeds or some nuts in there. And they're grabbing them and they're coming back out here. I know on them, but there's so many parrots, parakeets and macaws flying around everywhere this morning. It's my boys over there hunting. And roly polying. He's all deep undercover. He hears all these birds. He's going to get him one. Can you see him in there? What you doing, boy? What you doing? Dove, pigeon. Van is on the dash. That means we have left our camp with all those amazing parrots and birds. We needed that break. We did not originally plan on staying two nights there, but we needed the break. The kitties needed the break. Everybody needed a break. But now we are back on the road and we've got plans for a long driving day. We're trying really hard to get to our first cool destination here in Brazil within the next two days. But Brazil is huge, so it's taken us a while to get there. So we've stopped for diesel, and I just wanted to give y'all a kitty update. So they had nice long walks this morning. And gee, well, he likes to have a fort. So we knew it was a long driving day and we built him a fort and little Vanna, she rides on the dash or on the couch and she likes to have little pillow cubbies. So we have made sure they are both good to go for our seven hour drive day. All right, there's a haven. On our first night in Brazil, we stayed at a parking lot in one of those places. It has the big statue of, Lib statue of Liberty in front of it. Onde comprar un, un prazar? Where you buy something, something, something. Portuguese is definitely a much different language than English and Spanish. But we are about four hours into our drive today. It was about a seven hour drive, seven and a half. So we have a little over three hours left. This has been a really good road. However, there is a lot of truck traffic and a lot of these long double length semi trucks and they're heavy loaded. And so, and there is some hills up and down through here. It's kind of actually hilly. So they slow down. So two lane road passing sometime is difficult, but we've made good time. The cats are doing amazing. Van is on the dash, snows at the wheel. Three hours to go. Three hours to go. All right, everyone. As far as we can see both ways, we are in a traffic jam. And what's weird is you can see traffic coming from the other direction. It keeps coming, but our way has been stopped for about 20 minutes. Now we've been on the road for about six and a half or seven hours so far. And we've been telling you about all the truck traffic. You can see all these trucks behind us and in front of us, double trailers, even tankers. So they're heavy load. It's even a slight hill uphill like this. They're gonna have a hard time getting a start. We don't know what's going on. Thinking about popping the drone, but by the time you get it up, the traffic could move. We just have no idea what's going on. It's 4.30 right now. We have the GPS says hour and 15 minutes left, which would put us there at 5.48, just as it's getting dark. However, we have not moved for 28 minutes. And people are out of their trucks and there's no sign of moving. So we think it gets dark around six o'clock here. 
Uh, we still have not moved. Right now it says we'll get to our camp at 551. Curtis decided to pop up the drone and see just how far this traffic jam is. There is a possible camp about 20 minutes behind us. So if we turned around, we could go back and camp there. We've got to make the decision. Move forward with the thought of maybe getting caught in the dark or backtrack. We'll see. All right, traffic finally started moving. It is now 5.02. I think the last time I spoke to you was 4.30, flew the drone. As far as we could see, traffic was stopped. It moved here for a little bit. The problem is these semi trucks move so slow if you don't get around and go past them, you don't hardly move. So we're able to jump up quite a few spots here but we haven't made it to the corner, so I think we still have a couple miles left. I was talking to a truck driver, and he said there was a head-on accident between two semi-trucks. So I hope everyone's okay. It does not sound good. The good news is we always have our house with us. So if we gotta pull over on the side of the road, that's what we do. Especially when whoever's up there that had the head-on is definitely them and their families are having a way worse time than being stuck in a traffic jam. It's 5.08, we're on the move again, van is on the dash, got it locked down. Pressure situation as the sun goes down on us again in Brazil. Oh. We're never gonna make it to camp before dark. But I think we'll be surrounded by all these cars, so it'll be okay. Alright, we got a little slow down here. Now this is a big bend. I could see up around this big turn in the drone. And traffic is just jammed up forever here. Alright, it is stop and go. But we, <laughs> we are working it. <laughs> Snow is working it. Every time. Every time the traffic goes, we hop in the passing lane and just pick up tons of space because these slow trucks. Oh, it's intense, guys, it's intense. The day is winding down and it's intense as always. So we just said the GPS says seven o'clock, we'll get to camp, but that's if we're moving and we're not. But you know what they say, you always gotta look for the silver lining. Look at the sky. There's lots of silver linings. Headlights are starting to come the other way. And the sun is definitely just about to All right, Snow just made a great driving move. And now I can see we have a little better view and the sun here is not quite down, but it is just sticking up over the jungle. In the jungle, the mighty jungle. Oh. Is that an owl? Here. Well, you gotta hurry. We've spotted some sort of a cool bird. We don't know what he is. We are trying to figure it out. Kurt is trying to get the big camera, but <laughs> I'm not stopping. We are watching the last sliver of the sun go down here we are in Brazil. <laughs> On the road, over an hour from our camp, sitting dead still. Second time in Brazil. It's 10 after 6. Yeah. Even if we started moving right now, we would not get there till 7.23. We think we have regrouped. And we're not going to go to our planned camp because it's kind of out of the way and off the main road. We're going to just stay on this road till we get to... The next big city, which is probably about an hour and 15 minutes away. 
find a truck stop, a gas station, a restaurant, just find somewhere to pull in and park, sleep, get up and hit the road bright and early in the morning, regroup. All right, guys, we are officially caught in the dark. And traffic is stop and go, but it is mostly stop. All right, this is starting to feel a little bit like Blair Witch Project. Uh. We're going through the woods, the jungle, the jungles of Brazil. It's dark. How you doing, Snow? Oh. We don't drive at night and we have this protective tent on our windows that's kind of like a glass break deterrent and it makes it hard to see at night so I'm hanging my head out the window. A couple things you should know. Number one, 7.45 is the estimated time arrival. Still have an hour and 10 minute drive. Probably going to end up going with plan B. And the second thing is, we don't have cell phone coverage. So if you, some of you are thinking, why isn't Google traffic showing you how much further you have, or why isn't the road red? We do not have cell phones, so we wouldn't get live updates right now anyway. Snow? Guys, the one thing that you do not do down here in Central and South America is drive at night as van lifers or overlanders. A lot of people think it's because it's dangerous, and yes, there are dangerous areas, but also it has to do with the condition of the road changing abruptly at any time, and uh, animals, cows, wild animals, horses, all kinds of stuff on the road, and other vehicles are not guaranteed to have brake lights and headlights. Driving at night is a bad deal and we're stuck doing it. He just cut his truck off. Stopped. But I think it was to let the truck that took my way to center and all this time. Wow, guys, that is really a tragic accident. I feel for those who are involved, it looks like what happened is if you can see these semi trucks, a lot of them are hauling dual trailers, heavy loads, you can see. And these semi cabs have front flat faces and it looks like it was a head-on and we could just see the whole front side of the semi truck was just devastated so our thoughts go out to these guys we know what it's like to be on the road so much and the risks and dangers you're exposed to so we just really hope they're okay and um, 
Yeah, Snow, do you have anything to add? Uh, let's just leave it at that. Get up the road. We got about an hour until we can find somewhere to park. And uh, yeah, let's just drive safe. It is nine o'clock. We just found a restaurant just outside of a pretty good sized city. We made it. Pulled over, closed the van up tight. Kurt is making oodles of noodles. <laughs> and then we're going to bed. So, with that, I think we're going to wind this video down. It has been one heck of a day. 12 hours of driving. Thank goodness the kitties seem to think that the traffic jam was a break. <laughs> but anyway, we made it. We're safe. We'll see you guys in a few days. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.